On Sunday, Japan's ruling party scored a sweeping victory in the House of Councillors' election, helping pro-constitutional amendment forces retain their two-thirds majority. How to interpret the result and how will it impact China-Japan relations, the region and beyond? I'm pleased to be joined from Beijing by Rong Ying, Vice President of the China Institute of International Studies, and from Tokyo by Kei Schmitz, Research Assistant Professor from the University of Pittsburgh. Welcome to both of you to the point. Um, Mr. Rong, let me go to you first. As I said, on Sunday, Japan held an election to renew its members of the upper house and Japan's pro-constitutional amendment camp secured its critical two-thirds majority in the upper chamber needed to push for a first ever revision of the constitution. How shall we interpret this result? Well, I think uh, certainly the uh, upper house election uh, uh, and the, the, win the big win by the ruling LDP is a big news, a uh, big sort of a positive one for Prime Minister uh, 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 Kishida, uh, because obviously I think this is a kind of a midterm test uh, for him, which I means I think he did uh, pretty well, uh, winning big. And also I think in the next uh, uh, three years there will be no national elections ahead. In other words, uh, the wing, the big win for LDP, for Prime Minister Kishida himself, will give him enough time and room to pursue his own agenda, economic, uh, political, diplomatic agenda, to, I think, bring uh, uh, Japan uh, 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 to play a more positive, more constructive uh, role uh, as the, I think, Japan itself facing uh, daunting challenges and also in the region and beyond, uh, 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 making Japan very, I think, uh, need to really and make effort to adjust the terms. In particular, I think the economic situation where we have seen that despite the fact that LDP, uh, Prime Minister Kishida wins big, he, I think uh, he obviously facing a lot of problems. You see the, uh, the uh, inflation, the pressure from that. And also I think the depreciation of the Biden with the Japanese Yuan now has reached a record high in 24 years. So big uh, victory, big problems ahead. Professor Shimizu, we have seen Japan becoming increasingly um, hawkish actually towards China over the past few years and more in line with the United States so-called Indo-Pacific strategy. Now with the pro-constitutional amendment forces maintaining this majority in the upper house, uh, will it give Japan carte blanche, let's say, to really initiate the revision of the constitution? It's true, yes, that the upper house is much more influential than commonly thought. In fact, the hurdle for the lower house to override the upper house is quite high. So in terms of just constitutional revision, uh, in particular Article 9, this is in fact a major step forward for the ruling party. And in fact, even before former Prime Minister Abe's death, there was increasing support for greater commitment to security, both domestic and inter international for Japan. And this, of course, has been accelerated by the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the ensuring war, but also by perceived threats in Japan's immediate neighborhood. But that said, I believe the hurdle remains quite high. Abe himself faced considerable opposition to his views of constitutional revision, one in which the Japanese state wielded greater control over security concerns, including the reinterpretation of Article 9. It is only later in his time as prime minister that Abe also recognized the equally important need for economic stability and revitalization, which has in fact been threatened over the last few years by of course the global COVID pandemic, um, as well as the economic recession that is uh, seemingly starting uh, to become more global as uh, the professor just mentioned. So while the Kishi administration, I believe, does have now some momentum with the election results, 
and the sudden passing of Prime Minister Abe towards constitutional revision, the ongoing economic concerns may over time dampen the administration's ambitions on the security front and bring greater focus to the economic needs that are in fact far greater and immediate. Mr. Rong, what's your reaction to the to the answer that uh, um, Ms. Shimizu just mentioned, for instance, uh, in terms of the revision of the constitution, which is really something that Japan's neighbors uh, have been paying attention very much over the past few years. Uh, does it really look like that Japan or the ruling coalition may have greater success towards their goal of revising the uh, post-World War II pacifist uh, constitution? Yeah, I think in general I agree with Professor Shimizu's uh, uh, view that uh, it is true the um, uh, the election, uh, the result of the election, uh, certainly because of the LDP and uh, and its uh, other sort of pro revision uh, parties. Now all together they have the two thirds majority, which I think uh, make it possible uh, to uh, uh, to start the process. Uh, I suspect that uh, the revision of the constitution should be or would be the priority issue for uh, uh, Prime Minister Kishida. Uh, obviously, I think the issue is important politically uh, for those, in, in particular for those pro-revision uh, 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 re revisionists. Uh, having said that, I think this is also a very much divisive issue. Because when we talk about the revision of a constitution, uh, obviously it is an issue uh, of the domestic politics of Japan. It would have to be decided by Japanese voters, by Japanese political, political parties. It also have, I think, the implications, the impact for regional countries and beyond. Uh, it is simply because the, the constitution itself was made in the context uh, uh, where I think uh, not only I think it is way in the wake of the, the end of, uh, of the World War II, uh, but more importantly, I think it, it helps Japan in general uh, because it, it pursues the pacifism, help Japan itself to develop in the past uh, 75 uh, but years. But Mr. Rong, and, uh, yeah, Mr. Rong, sorry yes. for interrupting there. What do you think of the rationale that basically is the emergence of China, although that word is not uttered, basically is the growth, the rise of China that prompted, that make it necessary for Japan to revise its constitution. Uh, do you see a problem in there? That's exactly the problem uh, where it lies. I think for Japan, uh, changing the constitution uh, means for, for different, uh, means differently for different parties, for LDP, for those conservative parties. I simply, they, are look, they wanted to change the Article 9 by uh, writing, by putting the so-called the, the uh, self-defense forces into it. This is, I think, uh, what would cause not only big problems, uh, uh, more divisions for Japan, as we have seen the, uh, uh, the change of security, law in 2015, huge demonstration, and it also have negative uh, uh, consequences and the impact for the, of the perceptions uh, of the country in the region, China, South Korea, and others. But the, I think the division of constitution, at least if I know, they also mean other things. For example, the change of the electoral district, they have more, to give more power of the cabinet to impose like, emergency laws, and also, in, I mean, in terms of con address concerns of, of environment and other, so there's other issues. So I think uh, for Jap when we look at the, uh, cons the revision of a constitution uh, for Prime Minister Kishida, for the ruling party, it would have to really define in a clear terms. And more importantly, it would have to reach an understanding what exactly they want to change and what is the real purpose and what were the consequences okay. for 
itself mm. and for the region. Mm. Professor uh, Shimin, so some media have said amid the worsening geopolitical environment, Japan and China, which have worked for 50 years to normalize their ties, look as if they're being pulled back to the starting point of normalization, lacking domestic support for better relations. Uh, do you agree with such assessment? Do you think that the China-Japan relations are currently trapped in some sort of a dilemma? Um, I don't necessarily believe that's true, uh, and, and there are several reasons for that. One is that uh, there has been a lack of information, a large part due to the COVID pandemic, where Japan has largely closed off its borders to uh, foreign travelers. China has done the same. And so the sense of proximity between China and Japan has been severed in some ways artificially by this pandemic. Of course, China's reaction to uh, both the Ukraine-Russia conflict and its own management of the COVID pandemic has many people in Japan quite concerned, both from a security, but as a much, if not more, from an economic perspective. Japan has relied heavily on China's economic growth and prosperity over the last couple of decades in order to prop up its own economy. Uh, especially in, fa in the face of an aging and shrinking population domestically. So for the vast majority of Japanese, um, I don't think it's much so much a security concern as much as it is an economic security concern and a sense that this tie is being you know, weakened artificially by uh, this pandemic and an eagerness to revitalize that relationship and with the stronger economic attractiveness on both sides, that this will surely impact how both nations see the security relationship between the two countries. Well, hopefully the situation will get better and we always keep a sense of optimism in our heart for this very important relationship. Many thanks to Mr. Rongying joining us from Beijing and for Professor Kei Shimizu joining us from Tokyo.